Well, greetings, this is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. I'm going to show you how to create the Staff Leave Planner. I've got all the information on the website. This tutorial will show you how to take the information from the website and add it to the template so that this planner will be functional for you. So the two things we need to do first of all is to download the template from OnlinePCLearning.com and then to open up the website until we see the tutorial for Leave Planner, Staff Leave Planner. Now what I've done to make this easy for us, I've put the website, squashed it over here onto the right, and I've put the Excel file onto the left. So I'm going to show you how to transfer the information over, how to move the formulas, how to add the named ranges. I've noticed that there's a few who are having difficulty doing this. So let's get going. First thing to do, I think we're told to be able to get this running, we need to put in some named ranges. So here are the named ranges that we need to put into our application. The first one is called Data Entry Sheet. How do we do that? Well, go to the ribbon at the top here, click on Formula, and then Name Manager. Now the Name Manager box will come up, click on New. When we click on New, grab the name that you see on the website over here, Data Entry Sheet, and right click and copy that. Put that name in the Name box at the top. Paste it in. Now grab the formula. Now I'm going to show you, make sure you don't grab a space before the formula. See what I've done there? See that space in there? Don't do that. Grab just the formula with the equal sign through to there. Right click and copy that over. Get the data that you got there and override it. Paste it in on top of there. And there it is. There's our first name range. Go OK. And then we'll go Name Manager again, New. And we'll add our second one in. Our second one is called N. So copy it again, put it over onto the top here, paste it in, and then grab the range, the reference data, that that named range refers to. Now these are static named ranges that we're putting in at the moment. I just want to show you how to do that. And paste it in. There's our second named range. Now we have two named ranges in there. One data entry sheet and one called end. How do you test a named range? Well you test it by clicking down here to see where it's taking you to. Now you notice that, that that's the named range there, all of that you see. That's how you test a named range for those who are not sure. So I'll go and add some more named ranges in here, but I want to show you then how to use the offset formula here to add this one in a moment. So now we have all of these static named ranges into our worksheet. So we'll open the name manager, here they are. Here's the six static named ranges. You should test each one to make sure that they're working. You notice that picks up our data over here. We're testing each one. If you don't test it, you're bound for heartache and failure. Make sure you test your named ranges. Now, I'm going to show you how to add the dynamic named range. Now, the dynamic named range is for our staff names over here. And of course, if there's no names in there and you have a dynamic named range looking for it, it won't work. So let's put in our first name into here before we create the dynamic named range. So we just put in here, we'll say Trevor Easton. There's our first name in there. And so now we'll open up the name manager once again. Click outside of there, name manager, new, and this is going to be called staff names. Here's the name up here. Just copy it, pop it over, right into here, and then grab the formula. Here's the formula down the bottom. Copy the formula over as well and drop it straight into the name box. Make sure that you don't copy anything before the equal sign. All right, let's have a look at that named range, that dynamic named range, to see if it's working. So if we click on there, it should highlight the one name. There it is, it's working just fine. Now that we have our named ranges in, we're going to use the, or add them to hyperlink to have two sheets. There's a button on the template, just click on the button, right click, and choose Hyperlink. Now we want to choose a place in this document and we want to go to our planner sheet. Under defined names choose planner sheet, go OK. Now we want to add our data validation to the data entry sheet. So here's the data validation, there's quite a lot we'll put in. I'm going to show you how to put in the basic, there's five I think that need to go in, some are just input messages and others are indeed 
dynamic named ranges and lists. So let's have a look at them first of all. We notice there's three different types, data validation list, a data validation date and restriction. So we're going to allow only a date to be added to certain cells and then data validation input message boxes. Now, the reason I'm using data validation input boxes is it looks much nicer than using comments all the way down your sheet. So let's put in our first data validation. We go from F10 to the end of rows. So where's F? Well, if you can't see, that's F10 there. What we will do too is show all of the headers. So click on the View tab and click Headers to show all of the headers. So we've got F10 to the bottom of our sheet. Push the Shift key down and click on the bottom. All of those cells are now highlighted. Choose Data and Data Validation. And we'll choose List. And click into the source box, hit the F3 key, and this time we want to use type as our named range. So we go OK. And then OK again. Now we have our data type. So we can give this a type. Let's say this is rec leave. So we'll put that in there. Over here we will put our FTE, which is basically the equivalent, or it's called full-time equivalent. So if someone works six shifts in a fortnight or three shifts in a week, they'd be 0.6 or whatever you want in there. The number of weeks, weeks that they have as rec leave is added here and the starting hours that they have and the date that is added. We'll add this information in just a moment. Our next data validation is over here in Q10. If you look at the website, through to the end of the row, so all the way down here, hold the shift key down again Go over to Data, Data Validation, and we'll choose a list once again. Click in the source box, hit the F3 key, and this time it is staff names. Click OK, and OK again. And here our staff names can be put in. So we could put in that staff name if we wanted into there. Now, the rest of the data validation, our next data validation restricts us to a date. It is J10. So find J10, this is our dates added here, J10 through to the last row, choose data, and this time rather than list, we are going to choose date. And what I want you to then do, any date between starting date, let's say the 1st of the 1st, 2000, and the 1st of the 1st, 2040. So any date between that is a valid date. And you'd also then put a message box in here. And the message box should tell us that, just as we've mentioned over here, we should put a message box in saying add a date. So we would say add a date. And then here's the message we'd put in. So we just grab this information and copy it and pop it into our box here. Paste it in. OK. You'll notice as soon as we try to add an invalid date, it rejects that for us. And of course, every time we click on the cell, it's going to say, add a date. So our message should read, you need to add a date in this column. Now we're going to have a look at adding our formulas. There's a couple of other messages that you need to add. I won't go into doing that in this tutorial. But let's start adding our formulas. In M6, here it is here, cell M6, we're going to add a sum if formula. Again, don't take anything more than the equal sign that you see, copy it in, and put it into M6. M6. Now, you selected M6, don't paste it into the cell. Go up to the formula bar, right click, and paste it in. And then click outside. There's the formula in M6. Do the same for the next two cells, for N and O. So there are the three formulas at the top. The mistake I've noticed people making is that they're pasting the formula straight into the cell and secondly, they're often grabbing more than just the formula. They'll grab the space before it or data after it. So just to make sure you copy exactly the formula. Now we do very much the same with these formulas. So in K10, so we go to K10. Here it is here, I think K10. We're going to copy our first formula. So again, we'll just grab it here. Don't go like that and grab the text on the next line. Just grab the formula, copy it. Go over to K10, there's K10, up to the formula bar and paste in the formula. Just click to one side, don't hit enter. Now, 
Click that cell again, right click, choose copy, then select by holding down the shift key, the range underneath it, right click and now choose paste formulas. And those formulas will be in all of those cells, all the way down. Right? We will do the same with our next one. So I'll go through one more with you. Here is L10. So in L10, grab the formula there, exactly copy it. Here's L10, up to the formula bar, right click and paste. Click outside, then copy the cell. Grab the range here, holding down the shift key to highlight the range, right click and now paste formulas in. Right. Do the same across all the way through here with M, N and O. Now I've pasted those formulas in and you'll notice we're getting a value error on these two columns. Don't worry about that. That's caused by these zeros here and they will disappear when we add the reference data into the planner sheet. Just make sure the formulas are as we want. This one here is going to tell us we must take leave or OK is going to put text in. Have a look at what these formulas are doing. Really it's, I guess, cheating in a way just to put the formulas in and not know what they're doing. If you really want to learn, take the time to have a look at this. What I will tell you is this, that you notice this figure eight in here. That's for an eight hour day. If your staff work a different time frame to that, then you will need to change that to whatever the time frame they work. Now the other thing that we want to do at this stage is we want to put in some starting dates up here. So just to get going, we're going to put in 12th of the 12th, one three into there and then 12th of the 12th, one three into here. This is going to be the date that starts our Gantt chart off. And this is the date where we check the total number of hours we'll have at any given time. You can change this date. You'll notice that the formula in here for accrued hours references that date. You see it's referencing all of those. It takes into account the difference between these two dates. All right, having said that, let's move along. What we want to do next is just add a little bit of conditional formatting. Where do we do that? Well, we want to do that into this area here. So select the cells there, right to the bottom, and then choose on the Home tab, Conditional Formatting. There it is here. And we'll say New Rule. With our new rule, Formula, Format only cells that contain cell value that is specific text containing and we'll choose OK. Now it doesn't need to be case sensitive in here. Format this then to a green color. File and then green. OK. And then OK again. Now you'll notice because that says OK because it's we'll, we'll see that it's if it was uh, our values were wrong if we were over the limit of accrued hours, that would say the must take leave and it would be in red. So you go back in again and then you would go to the home tab, conditional formatting once again, manage rules and now you go new rule. Cell values that contain, cell value that has specific te text and the text that we're going to use is must take leave. And you could just use, leave it as must take it. It has to just contain part of this text. And then we'll format this to red. There's this red here. Okay. So now our conditional formatting is in for both of these. At this stage of the tutorial, we really should add a comment in here that shows what we need to do, some instructions. So we just right click and choose insert comment. So there's our normal comment. Just take the text out of the top of it. And I'm going to change the shape of this comment. So we just right click it and say show hide comments. And then up the top I've enabled the change shape. If you, you have to go to the developer tab to do that, we'll just click on that comment again. And we'll go change shape. And we're going to make it rounded. Pull it down and out. And if you have a look at the website, you'll see the instructions here to be able to create an image that goes into there. How do you add the image for the instructions? Right click, and then we would choose format comment, and then under the 
lines and colors under fill click down here fill effects and then of course we want to choose picture select the picture we will go and locate the picture you want to work offline so we'll go to our desktop and we'll find our leaf planner and we'll just grab our picture and insert that in now there's instructions on the website about how to create that picture in PowerPoint and with the snip tool or snipping tool that comes with Windows 7 and Windows 8. So there's our comment. Now we want to hide it, so just right click and choose hide comment. So that will enable someone who comes in here and wants to change this date to a future date. They're going to be given all the information that they need so that the things they need to do are going to pop up straight away so that they see them. Okay. Now that is enough, and um, that is all we need to do for this sheet. So let's now go to the planner sheet over to here and start adding the information we need. Very similar, we're going to be pasting some formulas in. So up here into G4, just hit the equal sign and you can type this one in yourself. It's equals G7. And then because uh, we've added this, we can just hit enter. And notice it puts in a January date, which is going to go right back to 1900. All you then need to do with regard to this is copy this right across. So grab it till you get it right on the corner here. See the little star and pull it all the way over right to the end of our data set, which is to there, to the end of this green there. And you'll notice the abbreviated Jan goes all the way through. Now in our next cell down in G5, we have a formula. So copy it here exactly as you see it. Right click, copy the formula. Over here now go to the formula bar and paste in your formula. Click outside again to add your formula. Now we need to copy that across as well. So again get your little star when you get right in the corner and copy that all the way through to the other side. Right through to here to the end of the green. Okay, don't worry about the error value in there at the moment. Now we want to move down to G7. Now it's going to be hard to find because these column widths are at 0.33, which is really small. So just click into here and into there, we want to add this formula into G7. So copy it over here, copy, and then go to the formula bar up the top and paste it in and click outside once again. So under G7, we should have that formula. Here it is here. Just see if we get it. There's the formula. Now, use, the tab, use your arrow key to go to the next cell. We're in the next cell. So we're going to go in here and type the formula equals G7 plus 1. And then we'll hit Enter. Now it's widened up our column. Don't worry about that. Again, we want to copy this right to the end. So grab hold of it, copy it all the way over through to here. Okay, right the way through. So now you notice that all our weeks are different and all of our months have changed. It's now accurate. We just want to change this column back to its right size. So we'll, with the view tab, we'll show the headers at the top. With the headers shown at the top, we'll just highlight that Go to column width and we're going to go 0.33 and click OK. Now that's all our header information there together. Now we want to put our formulas into here. So let's go and have a look at the next lot of formulas. It says these two formulas are for the staff name and leave type. So grab hold of the formula, it's for E8, copy it over, copy, pop it into E8 into there and then into the formula bar and paste it right to the end of your formula bar and paste it in. Click away again and the formula's in there. Copy it over and then highlight the data below. Holding down your shift key to make sure that you get all of the rows highlighted, all of the cells highlighted. Right click and choose paste formula. Do the same for here. Copy our formula, which refers to our data sheet. We're just transferring the data over from the data sheet into here, copy it in, into the formula bar first of all, and then click outside. Now we're going to go in and copy the formula and paste it below. Now again, take the time to have a look at what these formulas are doing. If you can't work out what the formula is doing, copy that cell again, 
select these cells underneath it. I have to do this again, right click and paste formulas. Now, if you can't work out what these formulas are doing, take the time to do it because you're not learning unless you do. There's really only one really complicated formula in this, and that's the formula I'm going to show you right now. So you'll notice over on the website, I actually say this is the main formula for the Gantt chart that needs to be added. Here it is here. It needs to go right across to all of these cells. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, let's get it into one cell. That's the first thing we want to do. So right click and copy, and we'll choose our first cell there. What's the cell? It's got to be G8. Unless you get G8, things aren't going to go too good. So we've got G8, yes, G8, up into the formula bar and paste in that formula. Click outside. Now back into G8 again, right click and copy. This time, we now want to get all of these cells. So go right to the last cell, hold down your control key, then right click and choose paste formulas. Now this will take a moment, you'll see it starting to come all the way down the sheet for us in just a second. I'll click outside. Our last formula over here to the right gives us all our totals over in column NN. What is that formula? Well, here it is here. Let's have a look at it. Grab just the formula, right click and copy. And again, do the same into here, into the, I think we're going to get the hang of this by the time we're finished. Copy the formula and then paste it into this array of cells. Okay, now when we go back to our data entry sheet, you'll notice all of those value errors are missing. They're not there. Okay, what we now need to do, go to the planner sheet, we need to add some conditional formatting. And this is a formula that we're going to add, it's not a complicated one. So grab this whole range again, click into there, all the way through to the last cell at the very bottom here, hold down the shift key to get the full range array of cells. Then we're going to go to the Home tab and choose Conditional Formatting. And we'll choose New Rule. This time we'll be using a formula. So click into the section that says Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. Now here are the three conditional formats we need to put in. Here are, they're the same formula except for a different piece of text. Maternity, Long Service Leave and Rec Leave. And these would be exactly the same as what you have on your data entry sheet for your type. So I'm going to show you how to put in one and you can put the other two in yourself. So again, don't grab all of that. Just grab the formula, right click and copy it. Go over here and pop it in and paste it into there. Now format this, we're going to choose green into here and go OK. And this is if it says rec leave, then we're going to put in green. We go, OK. If, uh, of course, we put in, if it said maternity leave, it would go red. And if we put in long service blue. And you can change this to whatever it is that your organisation does. All right, well, now it's simply time to test. Let's go back and add a shift. Here we've got Trevor Easton in here. We know that our, our Gantt chart starts at the 12th of the 12th. So let's give him some leave. So let's say from the 2nd of the 1st, 2014, he's going to go on leave and he's going to end on the 4th of the 4th, 2014. He has a great break there and Trevor's going to have another break as well. This time it's going to be in August, 8th of the 8th and uh, 2014. I did that right, yes. And this time it's going to go to the 9th of the 9th. Just making some up here. And there's his two leaves. You'll notice we've accrued. We're starting to add up how much leave he's taking. Because we haven't put in any, any starting leave, we can see that there's a, a minus balance there at the moment. So we need to add some data in here. He's a, a one and he has six weeks leave. And the starting hours that he had at the beginning of this was 34 hours. And so now it tells us that he's allowed 320 hours. It's okay because he's only accrued, what is it? Now you'll notice we're getting some funny data here. Minus 500 hours. Why is that? It's because this date is wrong. You notice I put in 2016. We should say 2012, an earlier date. So we'll just change that over. And how we must take leave at this particular time. Well, let's say we make it 2000 and, um, 23rd of the 3rd. 
23rd of the 10th, let's say, 2012. Okay, he's still okay for leave. He's accrued 270 hours, approved as 90. Everything is fine. But let's go to our Gantt chart now and see what's happening there. Now you'll notice we should see his two blocks of leave. Yes, there's his first one. And because it's rec leave, it's showing in yellow. And there's his second one. And when we add our conditional formatting in here for our long service and maternity leave, they will show up as well. Now, this might take you a little bit of getting used to. I put some conditions on the website to help us to understand what this program is doing. Have a think about it and you'll need to change it to suit your needs. Now, there's an upbeat version of this that takes this, even gives some greater functionality. There's a video for it on the website. And also we run some code because when we want to move forward, we have to do a few things that are shown here. We have to change the dates over and move the data across if we want to move ahead in time. But the VBA one will do it automatically for us. All right, well, that's how you take the information from the website and move it over. I haven't spent a lot of time showing you what all these formulas do, but I do hope that you spend the time to learn the information behind them. There's one thing that we haven't done to conclude our tutorials, and that is that we haven't added our chart. We just want to put the headers in here for our chart. First of all, just click in the cell M5, click the equal sign, and then just click on Rec Leave over here and hit Enter. Over here, again, in our next one, hit the equal sign, Long Service Leave, and then Enter. And our last one, the equal sign again, and this time it's Maternity Leave and Enter. Now that we have that information there, just scroll over the six cells with information in them and then choose insert and we'll choose a chart. And we're going to choose a pie chart. Now we only have one value in here. Then you need to format this to something like that. And when you have your three colors, they'll show up with the various portions of leave that is distributed for your organization. But that's just to show you how to set up very simple chart. You can remove the background as I have and pull the chart up here and set it up to suit the needs that you have. Well, this is Trev from Online PC Learning. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found this valuable. There's a lot to be able to modify here to suit your own needs. Bye for now.